Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to bring forth Mireille Giuliano, the author of French Women Don't Get Fat, The Secret of Eating for Pleasure. She's also the author of French Women Don't Get Fat Cookbook, Women Work in the Art of Savoir Faire, and French Women for All Seasons. She has literally turned the tides on our understanding of food, wine, champagne, eating, and she is bringing joie de vivre and sensual culture back to women across the world. She is bringing romance to people that have forgotten it or lost it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mireille Giuliano to It's Rainmaking Time. Good evening. Bonjour. Bonjour and merci. <laughs> it is my pleasure. Je m'appelle Kim Maison Verte. <laughs> <laughs> oui, je m'appelle Mireille uh, ou bien Mireille en, en Provençal, which uh, means sun ray. Beautiful. Sunbeam. So, joie de vivre is easy for me. I live it every day. You can tell that you live it. And I, I actually saw on your website that you said you were retired. This doesn't look like retirement to me. <laughs> no, I, I, I wouldn't use that term. I think someone said it. Or... Did they say that you were retired? I think there was quotes around it, like a joke, maybe. No, it was, I mean, from corporate life, I took an early retirement, but it was to follow, you know, my third act. And uh, I certainly uh, don't feel that I work much uh, less than a full time, but a little bit less and differently anyway. I, I now have a, an inbox that I can control and I don't have to do all these awful presentations with figures and statistics and numbers, which is not my cup of tea at all. And yet you were the spokesperson for Champagne Veuve Clicquot. Yes. And you were there 20 years as a president and CEO. I imagine your joie de vivre increased when you left. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there, there were lots of, like in any jobs, there were lots of fun things to do. Uh, I love to lecture and, and um, you know, host dinners and make uh, food and wine presentation and talk about culture. But I didn't like the admin part of it, the human resource part of it, the the hassles and the, you know, the the stuff that a CEO has to deal with and, and you know, it has to be done. But I, I guess that's true about any job. You know, there's no perfect job and you have to make the best of it. But generally speaking, I was very passionate and, and loved uh, building a brand basically was what uh, really excited me um, to do. I've never been a champagne drinker, but I have to tell you, when I went on Facebook and I watched you pour champagne <laughs> and teach us how to drink it, I became interested in it. It's contagious, isn't it? <laughs> it really, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it became very contagious. It's uh, very good for you, of course, in moderation, but a glass of champagne has, uh, I talk a lot about all the benefits uh, in my books. And in French culture, a glass of wine is, you know, wine is food for us. It's part of the meal. It's an element of the meal. So it's like a piece of bread or a piece of fruit. It's just, you know, a little section that complements the meal and gives you more pleasure. This book, it's in 37 languages already. Every woman in the world should read it. This really should become almost a movement because this would bring back romance. This would bring back fun and pleasure. There's so many things about your book, French Women Don't Get Fat, one of them that you said is you said French women have a balanced and time-tested relationship to food and life. That's really true. Yes, and it you know I just spent uh, another summer in Provence now that I have more time, and uh, I see it over and over. Although things are changing, uh, like everywhere else, we still have this quality of life that is really unique to France, and uh, it's just marvelous to how. Uh, it has an impact on your day, on your mood, on your family, on your friends, on on the way you feel and the way you behave and the way you uh, act. And um, you know, I mean, uh, it's it's part of the of, of the whole holistic concept about the French lifestyle. And you say also that the French don't talk about diets, only what you enjoy, feelings, family, hobbies, philosophies, politics, culture, food. 
Well, no, you know, we we deal. I mean, we we are like every woman in the developed world. Uh, some of us have to uh, do a few tricks, but we don't we don't talk about it because, first of all, it's boring to others, and and we certainly never mention it to our men, you know. Uh, but uh, we we do what we have to do, you know. We we work on on compromises and compensations, but without depriving ourselves. And we know how to enjoy a meal. Let's say last night I met friends for dinner and we had wine and bread and cheese. And and I'm not not going to say, oh no, I can't eat this or oh you know this is too fattening. No, I enjoy it. And the next day, guess what? I'm not going to have two croissants for breakfast. I'll have a yogurt, you know. So it's it's um, the French woman who is good at uh, being bien dans sa peau knows how to manage her, her her relationship with food and and how to control it in a way because it's all in the mind and she knows how to beat the mind and how to look at it on a weekly basis rather than on you know going on the scale every morning and seeing that you you have three ounces too much and you're going to have to starve yourself uh so it's a different attitude uh towards food and towards well-being and i notice also that people don't grow up dreading to cook it's part no. of life no actually you know that is the big uh message and philosophy in my third uh in in the third uh, part of the french woman trilogy the cookbook which is more than a cookbook it's really the continuation of the lifestyle and it's something actually that i i learn um after writing french women don't get fat and lecturing this past five six years and especially in america uh and also a little bit in england and australia which are by far the countries with the most overweight and obese people i was trying to understand why are there so many uh people with with this challenge and it occurred to me that um, especially in, in America, which is a young country in terms of discovering food, you know, 20 years ago, everybody was eating like... Uh, Pop-tarts uh, and... <laughs> uh, junk food, yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, discovering food and different foods and, and different ways of uh, different culture uh, of food. But um, most of the people uh, would eat prepared food or restaurant food or junk food. and in most cases, it's not real food unless you go, you know, to a great or very good restaurant, but it's what I call fake food. So people have really no connection to food. You know, they eat something that comes out of a box and that is usually over-salted or over, over sweet, and that makes you more hungry. And on top of it, you don't eat at the table, so you don't involve your senses. You don't take the time it takes for you to really, um, you know, make the difference between eating to live and living to eat. When you eat fast, you eat more. And uh, when you learn to eat at the table and, you know, eat slowly and chew well and not multitask, uh, then, you know, your brain needs uh, 20 minutes to, to send this message, to get the message that you are you've eaten enough. And most people according to surveys and statistics, eat their meals between, you know, three minutes and 12 minutes. And that's not enough. So in a way, you're, wasted, you're wasting everything. And if on top you're eating the wrong food or the food loaded with not only sugar and salt, but all these, you know, what I call poison, the chemical, the, the um, fructose, uh, corn, syrup. corn syrup and all that, that that is not food. That is disguised, you know, poison. So cooking is so so vital because cooking connects you to food and it makes you look at food, smell food, prepare food, and then you can involve, you know, your children, your partners, your your family, and then you sit down and you share it. And and eating at the table is more than just feeding yourself. It's a uh, it's ritual. About Conviviality, and it's about, you know, relaxing and sharing and talking and.